All right, here we are. My second Loom video. Very excited about this. And what this is going to allow me to do, actually, is to be able to read um, the April update um, with you guys here. So uh, I had wanted for a long time to be able to read um, the monthly update to do a video update, and here it is. So here we go. The Manios Compounding Machine, April 2021 update. And I always start every single monthly letter with these four quotations. Um, it helps me clarify my own thinking, reinforce some ideas uh, uh, that I use uh, each and every month. So the first quotation is, there will be good years and there will be bad years, but the compounding will continue on unabated. If compound interest is indeed the eighth wonder of the world, then leverage compounding is certainly the ninth, tenth, and eleventh. A penny saved is just a penny earned, unless, of course, you double that penny every days, every day for 30 days, which is then $5,368,709.12. Capital is perhaps the last form of individual freedom. And here's the letter. On Tuesday, April 6th, I made my first move of the month by executing my monthly dollar cost averaging into vanilla index funds by purchasing approximately $1,000 of DIA. So then beneath that, 4621, three shares DIA at $334, which is 1374 So this is a, a strategy that I employ. It's a, it's a marriage of dollar cost averaging and indexing. And so um, every month for 2021, I am buying approximately $1,000 of DIA. Now, next year, I'll change DIA to, let's say, VOO, which is the S&P 500, and perhaps the year after that, QQQ, which is the NASDAQ. Um, DIA is the, the Dow Jones Industrial. Capital at this point in the month has risen a bit from the end of last month, going from 917233 cents to approximately 955000 a $38,000 increase in six days. It will be quite interesting to see where capital rests at the end of the month. Over the past few months, capital has seemed to pop during the first two weeks of the month, only to sell off during the latter half. So we shall see where we end up on April 30th. On Monday, April 19th, I sold my first option of the month. Remember, I sell right options, which makes me the casino, whereas those who buy options are the gamblers, in my opinion. I run about $125,000 a month in option exposure, but eventually I would like to run a million a month as capital grows. Perhaps then I can change the title of my entity from the Manios Compounding Machines to the Manios Casino. Um, to that point, a friend of mine actually, after reading this, decided to call me Sam Ace Rothstein. Um, so I actually make a mention of that uh, character from Casino in, in this month's letter. Uh, but moving on, I sold one gush May 21st, 2021, 65 call for a premium of 689.34, which annualizes out at 127.26%. I sold one nail May 21st, 2021, 85 put for a premium of 409, an annual return of 57.78. And finally, I sold one SOXL May 21st, 2021, 38 put for a premium of $209.34, an annual return of 66.10%. The three premiums total to 13.0802, and as you can see below, I made immediate purchases totaling 13.1379, a difference of only 577. And again, you know, for new new investors, people that are familiar with options, some of this right here can, can be a little bit, you know, I would say in the weeds. Um, you know, basically, I'm selling some put options here on some really highly volatile assets. So the premiums are, are quite lucrative. What I pick up below, uh, YZCAY, which is a Chinese coal company, and then ABUV, uh, sort of a value dividend kind of stock. Um, it is a shame that I wasn't able to execute these options last week as Yanzu Coal Mining Company ran up a bit, most recently from 1232 on April 13th to 13th today. But I still believe that it is a good contrarian buy. It is a super maniosian with a dividend yield of 6.32% and a PE of 
I would not be surprised that an anti-woke purchase, such as a coal mining company, becomes the Philip Morris of 2021 to 2041. Those who are familiar with the investing canon, not the Western canon, by the by, it's a reference to the great late Harold Bloom, uh, Yale professor, should immediately think of Jeremy Siegelstone stock for the long run, University of Penn Wharton professor, where he details that Philip Morris, an out of favor stock, was the best performer of the last century. Quote, you pay a very high price in the stock market for a cheery consensus, once opined the oracle of Omaha Warren Buffett. And you can't get any more anti-consensus than a coal mining company, especially a Chinese one. So just let me break down a couple of things in this paragraph. So let's take the super maniosian and the maniosians, the term that I developed, obviously, with my, my last name. But the um, basically the, the ratio in the super maniosian is where the dividend yield is greater than the price to earnings, which is very rare. It means to me when the dividend yield is, is higher than the price to earnings, it's saying I am a hated stock in the stock market. No one wants to buy me. Why is that? So again, it's not surprising um, you know, that uh, a, a Chinese coal mining company has a higher dividend than the price to earnings. Um, and then the reference there to Jeremy Siegel, which I'm going to the next paragraph, basically, you know, uh, he, he wrote a book called Stocks for the Long Run. Excellent book if you're interested in investing. Highly recommend it. And you'll see him pop up uh, on, you know, Bloomberg and CNBC every so often. Uh, I think he's still a professor at Wharton, and he also works um, with or for uh, Wisdom Tree, I believe. Um, but gr great intellect, um, great writer. Um, so um, now the regular Maniosian is where the ratio between the price to earnings and the uh, dividend yield is under two, but it's not where the dividend yield happens to be greater than the price to earnings. Um, so it's still quite interesting to me. It doesn't mean I always buy super Maniosians or Maniosians. It's just showing that there's, there's, there's sort of out of favor, um, unloved. But uh, moving on, so there's a quotation from uh, Jeremy Siegel. I was frankly shocked that Philip Morris would be the number one stock, Siegel said. I would just have never guessed that. I would have said maybe IBM. From 1925 to the end of 2003, tobacco company Philip Morris now – called all trade group, delivered a 17% average annual return, assuming all dividends were reinvested in the company's shares. That beat the average stock by 7.3 percentage points a year. A thousand investment of Philip Morris in 1925 would now be worth more than a quarter of a billion dollars, end quote. And just like that, the gods of investing must have been reading my above passage. For in the afternoon of April 19th, Altrea, maybe it's Altria, I'm not sure, and all tobacco stocks sold off intensely after Biden announced that he was looking to curb nicotine usage. In his book, Jeremy Siegel explains that the reason Altria was the best performing stock was due in part to the fact that bad headlines constantly drove it down, which in turn raised its dividend yield. So for owners of the stock who reinvested their dividends back into the stock, they were constantly repurchasing an undervalued stock. In a way, it's a similar situation when a CEO of a company has an intrinsic value calculated, and when the stock dips below that number, he or she engages in share buybacks. This essentially happened every quarter with owners of Altria's common stock. So in this Biden news, I purchased 10 shares of Altria at 49.113 for a total of 4.91. Siegel himself notes, quote, but in the capital markets, bad news for the firm often can be good news for investors who hold on to the stock and reinvest their dividends. If investors become overly pessimistic about the prospects for a stock, the low price enables stockholders to reinvest their dividends to buy the company on the cheap. These reinvested dividends have turned its stock into a pile of gold for those who stuck with Philip Morris. So what, what he's breaking down here, essentially, is that if a company is driven down by sentiment, but it's still paying a dividend, whether it's monthly or quarterly. But its intrinsic value is much higher than, than where it's trading due to this, this negative sentiment that's driving it down. When it issues its dividend, you're essentially purchasing an undervalued stock. And the longer it remains undervalued, like with Altria, let's say it's perpetually undervalued to a certain point it reaches its intrinsic value. 
Um, you're, you're purchasing undervalued stock year in and year out, and that's accelerating compound interest. And compound interest is everything, everything, everything that I do. It's the logo of the Manning's compounding machine. Every decision I make is to enhance, embellish, um, increase compounding, compound interest. So, you know, when I even meet people, you know, they say, oh, I'm an investor, or some people say they're a day trader or swing trader or this or that. I even go like above and beyond the term investor. I, I say, in a sense, compounder. Um, it's what I'm looking to do in real estate. It's what I'm looking to do in, in cryptocurrency with using BlockFi. It's what I'm looking, I'm always looking to compound capital. Um, so moving on. So, so now we get in, we get into the, uh, the Dave, the Dave Portnoy, uh, uh, Noriel Roguni, uh, shit coins. And this is just a little, a little fun. You know, as, as I say in this, in this year, you know, I don't even consider this investing. I, I don't go to Las Vegas to gamble, gamble. I don't play the lottery. So my dabbling in, in, in sort of cryptocurrency is just having fun. Um, you know, but, uh, anyways, on April 21st, I started to speculate a bit. Notice that I didn't use the word invest into all coins. I purchased a bit of Dogecoin and SafeMoon. I don't include my crypto holdings into the Manius compounding machine results as cryptocurrency is so novel and volatile. However, I must confess that if SafeMoon goes to the moon, I might have enough capital to buy the moon as I possess 156,631,871 nine seven of it so now i actually have 200 million due to the sort of tokenomics uh of it all um this also factors into my idea of syncretic investing which marries antithetical even hostile forms of investing into a coherent strategy can one imagine a strict value investor schooled in graham and dodd buying safe moon on an exchange called pancake swap and to this point i would not be surprised if warren or charlie trashed Bitcoin tomorrow at the Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholders conference. Aside, that's exactly what happened. So I predicted it. I, this was published the day before. Um, well, well, Warren was always more the, the gentleman than uh, than Charlie uh, said. He dodged it. And he said, "I'm all right with that," which is what a politician, I believe, from Louisiana, who was famous for dodging questions, whenever he wanted to dodge something, he would say. I'm all right with that. And uh, so that's what what uh, good natured Warren did. Charlie uh, called it what disgusting and contrary to the inter interests of civilization. Um, so I was I was right in that prediction. But moving on. Yet conversely, can one imagine a baseball hat wearing YouTube and crypto bro buying boring dividend pairs like Allstate, Altria, ABV, Bank of Montreal and Prudential? This particular gamble is also a heads I win, tails I don't lose much, monish poverty play. My exposure is a thousand dollars or so. Yeah, my upside is perhaps a hundred of that. So for the value guys, monish poverty uh, and Guy Spier are kind of the next public value investors like Warren and Charlie, meaning they write books, they speak about their investing, they they're sort of I wouldn't say public intellectuals, but public value investors. Um, but I must say that this whole thing reminds me a bit of Isaac Newton's misadventures in the infamous South Sea bubble, where he famously noted after losing $3 million, quote, I can count the movement of the stars, but not the madness of men. Oftentimes, street smart types run circles around academics as Geldvolk, which I created because German people with money, are perhaps more attuned to human emotions, greed, hope, despair, euphoria, dreams and fear. But back to a situation such as this, one can see that I have a very small exposure here. So even if it goes to zero, which I personally don't think it will, it won't really affect me or the integrity of the manual's compounding machine. And as I said, as an aside, I do not gamble in Las Vegas or play the lottery. So my crypto dabbling serves this purpose. Um, and so I go on a little bit. I'll just kind of paraphrase here, just like, you know, with with SafeMoon and the tokenomics, uh, the finite supply of Bitcoin, um, and then we go here. Yeah, a nice milestone was crossed on Monday, April 26th, as one of my brokerage accounts has 600,000 for the first time. By the by, this was the same brokerage account that had dipped to 203,000 
or March 20th, 2020. So I, I use multiple brokerage accounts. Um, this is this is one of the bigger ones. Um, and yeah, this this crossed 600,000 presently on. I'm recording this video on Thursday, May 20th. Um, it's dipped a little bit. I think we're probably, you know, um, overall, I think we were at 976 at the end of the month, which is the next paragraph. And this account was 600. I think this is one's now 585, 590 with some of the pullbacks. Um, and here we go. In conclusion, this month, capital increased from $917,233.62 to $976,702.87, an increase of $59,469.25, or 6.48% for the month. It would be glorious to cross the million dollar threshold next month. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, especially since the two year anniversary of the Manning's compounding machine. But I would be remiss if I ended this letter with anything other than safe moon to the moon, um, along with uh, Dave Portnoy, which uh, it's funny. I, I bought safe moon last month and, uh, you know, some point in April. And it looks like that like he's chosen safe moon as his his uh, definitive shit coin. Um, so we're, we're on board together there uh, to the moon, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so then you see the results here, the, the 594 input, 976 result, total return, CAGR. I'll explain that in a second, actually. The three years, the one year, 11 months, the income, the year to date income. Again, I run, you know, I just did a video on, on this new software called Composer, but I run this now manually, um, all weather, balanced out, alpha. So you can see I'm like at 246 in those um, just some figures on the option strategy how much is uh, how much option capital I'm using um, you know and this is this is um, right here can I do that yeah I can highlight okay cool um, this right here is just showing the power of compounding interest because it's the money that's put back in the machine between like I dollar cost average every month I reinvest all my dividends right now 41 I won't start pulling dividends until um, older, you know, maybe in my 60s, uh, option premium, and then securities lending, which is the uh, interactive broker stock yield enhancement program. So let's just break down the CAGR. I kind of do it here at the bottom, but um, the reason I do it, I do that is basically I started tracking my investments um, in 2019, uh, in, in May of 2019. So if one were to say to me, well, look, you started investing in 2019, so therefore you need to count the whole year as a one year. You can't just count it as, you know, from May until December. So if you count all of 2019 as a whole year, then that's a year, and then 20, and then, and now we get 21. So January 1st of 2021, are you counting that because we're now in 21 as a full year? So now you're three years, if you will, you know, again, it, um, or are you doing it? And that's why I call it precise. You're doing it from May of 2019 to uh, this point in this letter. It's April. Um, so it's May uh, to April 19 to 21. So it's one year, 11 months. Exactly. And so you can look at it. obviously the, the 29.58 CAGR is, is great. And just, you know, again, will will I be able to keep that up? I have no idea. Uh, you know, the odds are against me in that, despite, you know, when you're on um, when you're on YouTube, everyone's like, oh, look at my returns and look at this. I make so much money. I'm I'm so great. You know, I remember Warren Buffett one time saying, you know, I don't know of any investment that gets me an 18 percent return, you know, meaning the point he's trying to make in that is. And I think he was referring to credit cards, meaning if you have credit cards, pay them off, because I don't know if I, Warren Buffett, multi-billionaire CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Don't know of an 18% investment. Um, you, 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 I mean, look, he's being a little fake humble there, perhaps a little. But but the larger point he's trying to make is it is investing is hard. There's a lot of smart people uh, engaged in it uh, in public markets, in real estate. And, um, you know, will I keep compounding in the 20s? Well, look, if I do, I end up worth hundreds of millions of dollars, not just millions, hundreds of millions. Let me say that again. And the reason is, is I run about a million dollars. If I continue on this path at 26%, 29%, somewhere in that range, CAGR, um, 
I end up with, with I, think, I think the math is 97 million or 99 million. That's a 26. So if you do it 29, I can, I can pull it up on my phone. Wow, I have all these missed calls. Everyone's trying to get a hold of me here. And what, what, you know, what I'm pulling up actually, oh, actually we can do it this way. Well, let's see. Let's see this new, uh, let me just do it here. So what I'm pulling up is a compounding calculator. So um, compound interest calculator. Boop, boop, boop. So we're pulling up money chimp. And so let's do it. It's fun. It's fun to, to do. So let's say, you know, at this point, I'm running 976,000, right? That's where I am. And I'm 41. So let's say we go out 20 years, right? We go out 20 years. And I don't make any contributions, which is not going to happen. But let's just be conservative. Let's just say for whatever reason, you know, 26% return. It's $99,279,760. So right now I'm at um, – 29.58. So let's put the exact CAGR there, 29.58. And again, it's highly unlikely that that would happen. It would, it would place me in the realm of David Tepper, of Carl Icahn, uh, uh, of Warren Buffett, uh, not in the realm of Renaissance Tech and Jim Simmons, um, but it, it would place me in that 1% return of um, investors. And again, this is the power of compound interest. So let's see if I can... Uh, show that let's see no it's not really that good I'll just I'll just kind of read it off but basically to go from 26% to 29.58 it goes from what was it 97 million or 99 million to 173 million eight hundred and sixty three thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars so that's just amazing that the difference and again it's it's why um, Jack Bogle has been so critical of fees. Not to say that, that most people get a 29% return, but a 3% difference over 20 years on this kind of return is a difference of $73 million, a 3% return. So if you have high fees um, that, are, that are bringing down your overall returns, well, um, there you go. So, um, but yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, if I end up, you know, again, let's let's do it. If I even end up at a 15% return, you know, a 15% return, still 15.9 million. You know, um, I'm a pretty simple guy, so I, I, more than anything, I would need uh, to be frank. I'm not a private plane, white Rolls Royce, uh, Rolex guy. I'm more of a gym book guy, garden guy. But um, but yeah, 15.9 million. So there you go. So there it is. Um, this is a lot of fun. This is I'm using this new software, Loom. Uh, I've been wanting to kind of get this area as more like studio with the cameras and stuff. But it looks like with this Loom software, I can kind of do everything. Um, so I'll do this again uh, next month uh, as well. And um, yeah, any any questions, uh, comments? Feel free to to write in the comment section. Um, you know, always like and subscribe. I watch different people on YouTube, and that's sort of the mandatory beginning or end statement. Um, but for me, this isn't necessarily about like building a YouTube channel. It's just kind of share. I, I like to share my my experience, and and I learn. You know, I write these letters, these monthly letters, as much for myself as for anyone else, and it helps clarify my thinking. I'm able to jump back. Well, what was going on a year ago or two years ago? Uh, and what was I buying then? And did this work out or was this a, a horrible mistake? So there you have it. Um, I'll see you guys next month. Take care. Ciao.